Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video tutorial on deep learning with Keras. In this session, we are going to discuss on Keras preprocessing. It is the data preprocessing and data augmentation module of the Keras. It provides utilities for working with sequence data, text data, and image data. Let's start with sequence preprocessing. This sequence preprocessing is a very basic type of preprocessing. In the case of variable length sequence prediction problems, this requires that our data be transformed such that each sequence has the same length. These are all the techniques we use to prepare our variable length sequence data for sequence prediction problem in Keras. Pad sequence function in the Keras Deep Library can be used to pad variable length sequences. We generally use the default padding value 0 in the left or right side of a sequence. Generally, SkipGram tries to predict the source context word based on a target word. This SkipGram function generates SkipGram word pairs. This make underscore sampling underscore table generates a word rank based probabilistic sampling table for skip grams. Finally, this time series generator class is used for generating batches for temporal data. Now we are going to Jupyter to work with them. First we work with sequence preprocessing. We have sequences of data. Our target is to create a set with the same length of sequences. First, we use the option pad sequence, which is available in Keras preprocessing API. This pad underscore sequences function will take this variable length sequences as input. In this example, the highest length of sequence is 6. So for each sequence, the length will be converted to same 6, padded by 0. This 0 will be placed before the numbers as we set padding as pre. If the max len is less than the highest length of the sequence, it will also truncate the numbers from left as we say truncating as pre. Let's execute it. Keras has generated an array of sequences with same length of 6, padded by 0. Next is skipgrams. It will help us to know how data are related to each other. We are using the first padded sequence as input. Vocabulary size is 6 and window size is 1, which tells how far forward and back we can look. We can specify the ratio of negative samples as well. Let's execute it. Down here we have a stream of 0 and 1. 1 means it actually occurs in the same window and 0 represents the negative samples which actually take random words from vocabulary. This 1 1 is in the sequence so it will return 1. This 2 1 is also present in the same window so it will return 1. In case of 4 5 or 1 1 or 3 3 those are not available in this sequence so these all are 0. Now time series generator. Usually, there are many types of LSTM models. Those can be used for time series forecasting problems. At the beginning of this type of analysis, we need to preprocess our data. It returns a sequence of instance. We have an input and a target data of the same length. We need to specify this input data and target in the function of time series generator. This length 2 will take two input data and assign this to a specific time step. Let's execute this. As we have chosen length 2, so it will take first two inputs and batch size 1, it means it take one batch and assign this to a time step 17. In the second case, for 2 and 3, the time step will be 18. In case of 6 and 7, it will be 21. This pre-processing is very important for time series analysis. So we have finished the sequence pre-processing. Now we are going to text pre-processing. We cannot use raw text directly into deep learning models. 
text data must be encoded as numbers to be used as input or output for deep learning models. Keras Deep Learning Library provides some basic functions to help us to prepare our text data. The first function we will use text to word sequence which is split text into a list of words. These words are called tokens and the process of splitting text into tokens is called tokenization. By default, this function automatically does three things. Split the words by space, filter out punctuations, and converts text to lowercase. We have a text. Keras is a high-level neural network API. Keras, Keras. This text to word sequence will take this text as input and split this into tokens. So let's execute it. So this function have split the text into tokens and we have 10 tokens in this text. This text to word sequence function filters out punctuations. It usually filters out all these if we set a specific symbol, it will ignore others. In this case, we use hash symbol in the filter, so it will ignore this new line. So let's execute it. So it ignores this new line. Now one hot function. We can use this to tokenize and integer encode a text document in one step. This function is a wrapper for the hashing trick function using hash as the hashing function. As with the text to word sequence function in the previous section, the one hot function will make the text to lowercase, filter out punctuations and split words based on white space. In addition to these, the vocabulary size must be specified, which defines the hashing space from that words are hashed which defines the hashing space from that words are hashed. Ideally, this should be longer than the vocabulary by some percentages to minimize the number of collisions. So we are taking n equals to our vocabulary size into 1.25. If we execute this, it will generate an integer for each token. This hashing trick function will also generate integers but using a different hash function. So I'm executing it. For this Keras, on one hot it was 11.5, but in hashing trick it is 3. The final one is a tokenizer. Keras provides this sophisticated API for preparing text that can be fit and reused to prepare multiple text documents. This may be preferred approach for large projects. First, we fit our word data for tokenizer. This word contains 10 tokens. Once fit, the tokenizer provides four attributes that can be used to describe the documents. Now I'm executing this. The first one is word counts. It returns the token with the, the number of times it occurs. Keras was three times, so it is three. Next one is document underscore count, which is 10. This word underscore index will display the words and their uniquely assigned integers. Finally, this word underscore docs will display the words and how many documents appeared in. This text to sequence will return a sequence of numbers. Each word will be assigned to an unique number. So the Keras is 1, E is, is 2, A is 3, high is 4, like that. Finally, this text to matrix will construct a matrix. The number of rows will be equal to the number of tokens and in this example it is 10. So there will be total 10 rows. And the words start at number 1 and an extra space is added for 0 or unknown. So each document is encoded as a 9 element vector with one position for each word. As the integer value of Keras is 1, it appears 3 times in number 1 document and in the last two documents. So in the first document the position of Keras will be in 1 and also in the last two documents the position of Keras will be 1. So we are done with text preprocessing. We are now going to the image preprocessing section. 
We are now going to pre-process our image data using Image Data Generator, which is available in keras.preprocessing.image API. We will use our MNIST dataset in this example. First, we load MNIST dataset and display a set of images. Then we reshape our training and test data so that we will be able to fit those for image data generator. As the default data type is float32, so we are just converting it to float32. Now we generate data and fit our training data on it. This image data generator contains different types of arguments. These are all the arguments available in our image data generator. This feature wise center will set input min to zero over the data set feature wise. Whereas sample wise center set to each sample min to zero. We can do feature wise normalization or sample wise normalization. In our example, we have used these two arguments horizontal underscore flip and vertical underscore flip and set true to them. So it will flip the image horizontally and vertically. Finally, this code snippet is displaying the flipped image. If we compare this to our original image, this is our original 4. So first it flipped horizontally, then vertically. So this is our final flipped image. This kind of pre-processing is very important for photographs of objects in a scene that can have a varied orientation. So that's all from Jupiter. Let's return to presentation. Today we have discussed about uh, sequence pre-processing, then text pre-processing and finally image pre-processing. So that's all for today.